Hey everybody, welcome to True Stream. Talking about art and life as an artist, here's your host, artist and educator, Bobby Chu. All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Chew Stream. So, for those of you that tuned in a little early, you got a sneak peek at what's coming out on Monday, which is Walter Tulp's amazing class, Expressive Characters. I've been working on this class with Wouter, so I've seen the whole entire thing, or most of it, anyways. Uh, enough to know that I'm going to be watching the whole entire thing and doing all the classes and everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, brilliant guy. So amazing. You know what I love about his classes that um, it really talks about the fundamentals, so that beginners are gonna love the class. But it takes the fundamentals to the nth level, so that professionals will also be able to get a lot out of this class. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, something that uh, so many professionals have in common. Is they have this immense respect for the fundamentals you know um, even though they can paint like the Dickens they're still doing a la prima paintings they're still studying perhaps the muscles of the body even though they can already draw the muscles of the body and they see how different people mm-hmm. draw the muscles of the body and, and everything so um, really excited about that class it's gonna be a really good one but enough about that <laughs> I want to say a big hello to my co-host, Masay. Hey, guys. Hey, Bobby. Right on. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're new to the stream, all you have to do is type in question in big capital letters and write your questions. And then uh, this is very interactive. So, you know, give you a big shout out and and answer your question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And perhaps... I don't know. I felt like we were good last time. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, we actually have a, a few that were left over from last week. Um, did you want to go through them? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so from last week, Brian Luna asked, uh, Hey Bobby, what's a great way to practice gesture, especially for animals? I go to zoos near me and try to get the gestures, but they never come out right. Of course, because you're... The only time that you can actually draw them is when they're sleeping, right? Yeah. Or if it's a tortoise. (laughs) Uh, But, of course, many people, they draw um, amazing, you know, animals in motion and all this stuff. And they do it at the zoo. And how do they do it? Well, this is how I do it. There's generally just a handful of standard poses that an animal has. Right, each animal has their different kind of standard poses. Uh, the dog when it's playful, the dog when when he's happy and running, or you know when he's uh, sad or feeling guilty. You know, there's <laughs> definite poses for that. So what I do is I start multiple poses at the same time. Mm. You know, and then when the animal goes back into a pose, you know, changes from one pose to another that's similar to a pose that I already sketched out, then I continue that pose. You know, and then they move again, and then I continue the other pose. Mm. That's a really good way. And if you're more of a beginner, I would highly recommend just starting off with the general structure of the thing. And if you're really, really beginner, I would start off with, as funny as it sounds, just drawing boxes that are tilted three-dimensionally in that exact position as the pose of the animal yeah you know why do that do that because if you're truly truly beginner then you're gonna have a hard time rotating a, a skull rotating a head rotating a pelvis in the right way if you can't rotate a cube just yet if you have no full control over a cube you're gonna have some serious difficulties with pelvises and all sorts of anatomy Mm-hmm. So just the head, uh, torso, and that's it. And then you could draw a stick kind of uh, figures or descriptions for the limbs, right? And, and that will help you to kind of start to understand the three-dimensional volume of those animals. And then from there, once you kind of really grasp that, then do what I said in the beginning, start a bunch of poses and you're just 
straight up just drawing the animals now now you've graduated from boxes um, but it's still a like I was saying fundamentals you got to respect the fundamentals so even if you can draw pretty darn good I would still start off with a couple boxes just to see if I could do it see if it looks <laughs> good yeah done right it'll look like a bunch of boxes that feel just like a dog or yeah. a monkey or whatever it is that you're drawing yeah and do you feel like, I guess it's really important to kind of study it before you actually go to the zoo as well I mean you don't mm. necessarily need to but it'll definitely help out a lot like yeah. doing your studies before you actually go to the or vice versa as well right. bring it back home draw on top of them yeah you know do yeah. some research draw on top of them a little bit fix them up mm -hmm. um, something that was really interesting like that sounds kind of hardcore to some <laughs> people let's go to the zoo and draw animals live you know while they're running around and stuff like that well why don't we use pictures well you know it might sound a little hardcore but you know Andrea Blasich the uh, sculptor yeah yeah so. he sculpts live yeah, I he see. He goes to the zoo Video or whatever. Photos. So crazy. Yeah. It's like you think having a sketchbook and drawing is drawing attention. It's like, imagine if you're sculpting something yep. you know, in the middle of the zoo. Exactly. You hit it right on the head, Masay. Draws <laughs> attention, right? Yeah. Because for those of you that haven't actually drawn at the zoo and stuff like that, the zoo is full of what? They're full of animals and they're full of kids. kids. Yep. And kids have, you know, God bless them, they're awesome, but they <laughs> have no idea about personal space a lot of times. And a lot of times they will put their heads right in between you and the sketchbook. So you can't even see your paper anymore. <laughs> they're like, wow, look at that, which is awesome. It's really great. Yeah. Um, but it's just one of those obstacles that we have to be mindful of mm -hmm. when we go to public places, especially places with lots of kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, okay, so the next question is by uh, Marius. Uh, how can I get clients as a beginner slash intermediate level character designer? I live in Romania. Where can you, uh, where you can't find studios or clients in the area? How do you get to those high levels of character design or whatever it is that you're that you wish for? right how do we get to those we actually had a conversation yesterday which was a really good one um, I was telling you about Jason Seiler yeah the amazing the incredible illustrator for editorials one of the top editorial illustrators in the country Time magazine you know person of the year painted person of the year for Time magazine mad magazine all sorts of stuff but I've known Jason for years and years and years, like 10 years or something like that, maybe a, a little bit more. And back then, he wasn't doing that, you know? He wasn't doing that. And one day, I don't even know if he remembers, but one day <laughs> he showed me this painting of Napoleon Dynamite that he did. And it was fantastic. It was awesome. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's great. Who's that for? And uh, he said, Oh, it's for Mad Magazine. I was like, really? That's so awesome. And he's like, no, it's not. <laughs> I just pretend it is. And then I said, oh, okay. And he said, yeah, it's for a small magazine. And I said, well, how much are you getting paid for it? And he said, $10,000. And I said, holy smokes, that's fantastic, especially for a small magazine. That's, un that's unheard of. And he said, and I said, really? You're getting paid $10,000? And he's like, no, but I, I just pretend that I am. And I go, oh, and he goes, because if I keep imagining that I'm painting for Mad Magazine, painting this $10,000 painting, that's what will attract that Mad Magazine job or that $10,000 job, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's so true, especially from an employer's point of view. It's like, if you don't show your chops how am I gonna know that you can actually achieve it right if I go okay I think you can do a $50 painting perhaps a really <laughs> simple painting and you give me a $50 painting how will I know that you can do a thousand dollar painting yeah. yeah you know unless you say okay $50 painting fine I'm gonna just imagine that this is a thousand dollar painting and 
I do it, you see it, you're super happy about it. And when you, you know, want me to do another one, I go, well, you know, I did this for my portfolio. This is what I would consider generally, this is what I consider a thousand dollar painting, mm. for mm -hmm. example, right? And then the person can either take it or not, or you can take their low paying job again or not. But that is the fastest way to move up because then you can take that painting, put it in your portfolio, shop it around and go, this is what I do for a thousand bucks or mm -hmm. higher, you know, $10,000 in Jason Siler's case. <laughs> um, but that's how you get to those levels. So if you want to be uh, you know, feature animation character designer or whatever, next time you get, the most simplest character design assignment guess what it's not guess what it's for brenda chapman it's for brad bird's new movie think about it like that it's no longer for your local uh free newsletter kind of <laughs> whatever publication it's for the top of the top that's the best way to do it you know, yeah. you'll find the ultimate shortcut that way. Yeah. And I guess if you keep doing those like $50 jobs, then people are only going to see you as that $50 job artist. Yeah. And if you do awesome, totally, they are totally getting way more than their money's worth. Mm -hmm. You won't have to do those jobs for very long. Trust yeah. me. As long as you keep putting that out there, take the work, use it in your portfolio, put it out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really great mentality. I thought that was a really great conversation that we uh -huh. had yesterday. I felt so jazzed, so pumped <laughs> to kick some butt, Yeah, you know, because I've been saying this for the last bunch of months to myself and sometimes to you. Uh, yeah. I've been saying, say, I don't want to live a normal life. I want to live <laughs> an accelerated life of mm -hmm. pure awesomeness. And the only way to do that is to kick some butt, put in yeah. that effort, put in that time. Let's do that. Let's do this. <laughs> when you put it in that perspective, it's like, if someone asked me, would you want to live an average life? Obviously, you wouldn't really want to say, yeah, I want to live a, an average life. I mean, maybe some people want to, but personally, I think, you know, that's something that I also want to reach as That's well. right. I want to be able to not just have an, a great life, but like... A great life for my family mm -hmm. right for for my parents and mm -hmm. things like that and and uh, average isn't gonna cut it mm hmm you want your and also you want your future self to be like proud of you too dang right that was a really <laughs> good yeah right so like I was talking about how how I like to make decisions is I like to think about it like okay five years from now that version of you what would that version of you want you to do? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're deciding, okay, should I do this extra job? Should I put in this extra effort? Should I do, you know, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I keep working with no breaks? Your, your five year future self would probably tell you, no, take some breaks. Yeah. Because now my arm hurts. Yeah. You know, it's all your fault. <laughs> Yeah, there's always moments where I'm like thinking, I just want to kick my my past butt in the like you know my totally. past butt <laughs> because there's like certain things that I should have been doing. But I mean, I guess you always learn from that. Well, let me ask you a question. Since we're always answering other people's questions, let me ask you a question. If you went back to that, you know, you in school and everything, uh, what would you do differently? Hmm. I think I I would tell myself to think about the future a bit more because I would just well back in school I would kind of just go to school just do my assignments and that's it so mm -hmm. I didn't really kind of try to exceed um, like obviously the school expectation but also my expectation I was kind of just sitting there comfortably mm -hmm. just kind of waiting for you know school to like finish graduating school and then hopefully get a job but I never really like thought about what the future c could hold for me yeah you know so. you get stuck in that and that's so normal yeah you know we're almost like set up to start thinking like mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. um 
But yeah, I remember like graduating school and then there's no more assignments. Yeah, like, it's like, what, what do you do? Yeah, what should I do now? <laughs> That's like me over the summer. That was a big problem for me. Yeah, shoot. But I think、um, I wouldn't really want to change my past now because, you know, obviously I wouldn't be where I am right now and have the drive I have、mm-hmm. at the moment. And of course. Yeah, I tell myself, like, you know, age doesn't matter. In the end, it's just how much you progress and. And it doesn't even matter. Like, you're talking about age and you're so young. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You, you're still, like, in your 20s and everything, and everything's great. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But you know what?、Uh, life isn't about waiting for better days. It's about enjoying the days that we have. So, whatever happened、mm-hmm. to you in the past, whatever's happening to you now, be happy that you are experiencing life in whatever way, shape, or form that you are,、mm-hmm. and that you're not a, a fly or like a lizard, you know, that <laughs> maybe has a lot more other things to worry about than just, you know, drawing good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay,、uh, let's just go to the next question.、Um, Lily KR asks、um, I'm putting together a portfolio to start getting some concept art jobs, and I only have a month to do it. How many and what kind of pieces do you think I'll need as a minimum to get hired? Minimum, I would say four truly amazing moving pieces. Minimum.、Uh, six. Really good pieces, perhaps.、Uh, and then I would just explain my situation. I've done all this studying, I've done all this learning, and these were the latest four things that I produced.、Mm-hmm. You know, putting in old stuff in my portfolio, I didn't want to do that because it doesn't reflect、uh, the things that I've learned in the past few months. Yeah. And it's also like you can try again after as well. Yeah, the time、fun. pressure thing, you、yeah. know? It's like you can't, as much as you can, you try not to have that be any kind of affecting, any kind of factor in your decision making.、Mm-hmm. You don't want to do things rushed. You want to go quick, but you don't want to rush, rush, right? John、yeah. Wooden. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's an awesome quote. Okay,、uh, the next question's by Sufi. Um, can I ask who's going to be at Florence? School is a.、Woo-hoo! Last year was awesome, by the way. Loved last year. I hope we partied together because I just remember、um, going to Ebe's、uh, bar or whatever that guy's name was, that really cool bartender that looks like Einstein. And then <laughs> somehow, before I knew it, I looked around and we're in front of the. that beautiful church with the Dante、uh, statue. and... Wow. And there's like 30 of us all just drinking. I brought a big, big bottle of whiskey <laughs> to share with everybody. It was such a fantastic time. I felt like I understood Italian by the end of it. <laughs> But, anyways, to answer your question, Florence. Oh my goodness. March 17th, 18th. Paula Zane from Lord of the Rings and、uh, Storks and Prince of Egypt and all sorts of stuff. Carla Ortiz. Doctor Strange, you know, Marvel, Extraordinaire,、uh, Magic the Gathering, Claire Wenling. If you don't know who Claire Wenling is, shame on、oh, you. Well, you have to Legend, know her. Legend, master, true master, master level. Holy smokes. Jesper Ising, Magic the Gathering, super beast of an artist, and Daniel Ariega.、Uh, he's okay. He works at a little studio <laughs> called Pixar. He's like the art. Director or something, yeah, a character design、movie. on there. I think he knows some stuff. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> going to be a really good, really good workshop.、Mm-hmm. Our biggest one so far in Florence. So get on it. And、uh, here you go. Use the discount code LEARN. You know, you can punch in LEARN and then you'll get a discount. Yeah.、Um, I believe that discount will expire January. 20 something. 27th, 25th, I forget.、Uh, but there you go. Definitely worth traveling to. Florence is such a beautiful city and it's nice and compact so you can walk everywhere.、Mm-hmm. And so much absolute, like, crucial art history happened there. Yeah. So, yeah. 
every artist should go to yeah. Florence, Paris. There's a few others, but those ones I would say for sure. Mm-hmm. It's like inspiration everywhere. And you can like amp it up by going to the workshop as well. So that's pretty. Yeah, and you feel like you're entering, you know, you're, you're, it's like you're going to these places where there were people like you mm-hmm. hundreds of years ago. You know, and being connected with that. Mm. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. It's totally different than, than looking at pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next uh, question is by Sabina. What's your opinion on putting fan art of a movie in a portfolio when applying to a studio that made that movie? Uh, mm. I like it as long as... Um, you're not, you know, copying Copy. a frame or something. Yeah. You know, like what's Avatar Two look like? That's what I was saying last week a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, just start doing it. What's the next Star Wars gonna be about? You know, yeah. make it up yourself and start doing it. Or read a couple of those uh, Star Wars books that you know haven't been turned into movies and do those. Mm, so, like, bringing out your, like, what do you call it? Your ideas and your interpretation of that. Yeah, movie. like they like they want to sure. see how you would work it, in their team. Yeah. But if you're just copying a frame, then that doesn't show how you're going to be working with the team. Yeah. If you're like, actually working like kind of off of a script, <laughs> so to speak. It's like, what are you going to bring to the table? Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next question is by KJP. Uh, you said that your portfolio should be focused, but if someone wants to apply for a concept design studio, like... Six more vodka or mass- massive black. Does it make sense to have diversity? Um, they also kind of have their own flavor of things. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, they can totally do you know a giant variety of things. But when you you kind of think of, uh, or when I kind of think of uh, massive black or si- six more vodka, I think of things that feel cool gritty you know for boys generally Mm. generally right so i would keep my portfolio same kind of thing it's catered it's targeted towards them now somebody was saying in um the comments of one of my videos about interviews they were saying, well, if you target and all this stuff and you do all this homework, it, oh, it's going to take so much time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, you can, it's like this. Uh, don't be that, like, I always relate things to obscure, you know, examples. But um, <laughs> first thing I think of is that guy in school that ends up asking every single girl to the prom. You know, you don't. He doesn't go with anybody in the end. He doesn't go with anybody good anyways, uh, generally, because yeah. all the girls know. They're like, like oh, oh. He's okay yeah. with anyone. And it feels like this repetitive, like, <laughs> canned, you know, pitch. Yeah. Right? But if you target that particular person, you do that research, and you, you make it personal, you show that effort, you think you're going to stand out? Of course. If you don't, you're gonna be pretty much invisible like um okay so the day before yesterday I posted this thing I'm looking for a new assistant you know I love mentoring people so every once in a while I like to bring on a new assistant and train them and see how they flourish and see how they might be able to fit um, you know in the studio now uh, all you have to do is message me in Facebook. You know, you want to read the post that I put up. And on the very bottom, you know, if you have to read the whole entire thing or else when you respond, I'll know that you didn't read the whole entire thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the responses, the ones that are very quick or canned or whatever, they're a guaranteed no-go. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to interview that person I'm not going to Skype with that person or whatever they're not going to get to that next stage Mm -hmm. because they didn't do the homework Mm -hmm. and that's exactly why I made it just a tiny bit challenging to actually apply for the job it's to filter out all that stuff because I don't have time to do all those uh, you know Skype meetings and all that but um, that being said hey if you're listening to this 
the stream after this live stream um, you know if it's past Friday if it's yeah if it's past Friday don't bother uh, messaging me because we're already getting a lot of applicants yeah that, yeah. yeah Friday January the 13th, 13th. by the way <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, so the next question is by Abby. Um, for schools and sus subscriptions, are there open assignments available for the lectures or are the assignments only for the critique classes? What, the lectures as in the... I guess the regular subscriptions. Yeah, they're available like, for yeah. subscribers, yeah. Yeah, like uh, if you subscribe, um, well, okay, if it's a full class, right? If you get the critique session, meaning interaction with the instructor, you would watch the lessons, do the assignments, hand it in, and then the teacher would literally give you a customized video feedback on your assignment, painting over your drawing, telling you where you went right, where you went wrong. If it's a subscription, you know, a full class, the critique session, that's a thousand dollars. That's the premium version, critique mm -hmm. class, right? Critique session. The subscription is only fifteen dollars a month. But it's exactly the same. The only thing is is that you don't get the personal feedback from the instructor, but you get to watch everybody else's feedback. Now, is there a huge difference between the two? Yes. You know, because just the whole entire idea of knowing that you are going to submit this homework, it has a, a due date, and you know that Nathan Fowkes, for example, is going to be looking at your homework and going over it and talking to you specifically about it. Just for that fact alone, you know, you're going to take that education. Uh, the seriousness of it the homework and everything to a whole new level mm -hmm. not only that but when somebody is drawing and painting over top of your stuff specifically you get over you get over these big hurdles way quicker because I can just look at your painting and go that's what that person's doing wrong here let me show you how to do it and I mm -hmm. actually show you on top of your stuff mm -hmm. totally different yeah it's like how you, when you helped me yesterday with a drawing that I'm working on. Mm. In my eyes, I was like, oh, okay, this looks pretty decent. But then when you, you know, draw mm. over, it's like, oh, okay, it's, it's totally off. <laughs> like, it's like a reality check kind of thing. And it's also like super helpful when you do it in front of me. So it's like the same thing for a critique class. Well, thank you. You know, it makes it so much more worth it <laughs> uh, hearing that. I, I feel like, uh, thank you. I feel appreciated. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's always like helpful when someone always gives like feedback. So I always appreciate those. Right on. Yeah. We make a good team. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next question is by... Uh, uh, Olivia, uh, at what point is it is it worth considering attempting to make a living from art? I know we're always learning and I'd like to start making a living, but I'm worried my art isn't good enough. Well, depends how much risk you need to, how much risk you're taking, I would say. If you're living at home, you know, and you're eating mom's good cooking, start being an artist now. You know, if you don't have to pay the rent and stuff like that. If you got a family and you are working, you know, in construction and, and that's what's paying the bills and your bills are quite high, then I would be like, you need to tough it out and do a bit of both for mm -hmm. a while. You know, mm -hmm. try to get those freelance jobs starting, get those clients coming in and get it to a point where you can't do both anymore. It's mm -hmm. just way too much. Then that's when you make the jump and you leave the well-paying construction job perhaps and take a huge pay cut because you're just starting off in this new life, this new profession, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And start scrambling and start building up that clientele as fast as you can, your work as fast as you can, all that stuff. Yeah. You know, once we start growing, it's like you pick a... You start gravitating towards a profession or a job. It's like you start sinking roots into the ground. 
right? And if you want to ter- go to another job, you got to get those roots out and you got to plant yourself again or else you're going to fall over and you're going to dry up and you're going <laughs> to you're going to die. <laughs> yeah. You know? So expect it, right? If we expect it, we'll go full force and we'll have way more of a chance to get over those humps because mm-hmm. they're coming. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question is by Sinalti10. Uh, is... Oh, sorry. Before we get to the next question, uh-huh. I just wanted to say, like, if you guys... I see a bunch of people talking about applying to be my assistant. Um, I want to mention you should be living in Toronto, in the mm-hmm. Toronto area. You know, mm-hmm. like, I can't... I don't want to do this uh, over the internet or anything. Okay, sorry, yeah. go okay. on. <laughs> um, okay, so the question is, is having your own website necessary? Some artists say it looks more professional and some say that they prefer to look at ArtStation, etc. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but it's... It's helpful. It's helpful, yeah. Yeah, and especially with social media nowadays, um, it's even less necessary, I mm, feel, mm-hmm. right? But... It does have a level of uh, professionalism to it. Yeah, and you can see how much time they put, like the artist puts into their website. Yeah, and you know, if you have uh, the domain name down or whatever, uh, hopefully then you'll have the highest kind of link when you search your name or something like that. You want to be in control of that link when somebody searches Masei Seki. You know, you want to be in control of what, whatever that first link is. Mm, mm-hmm. And it's really good sometimes to have a website for that reason alone. Yeah. You know, if it goes to some other site where, you know, I don't know, where it doesn't show you in the best light kind of thing. And, <laughs> and yeah, like a friend's frat party or something, <laughs> right? You don't want that to be the first link. That That is true. <laughs> okay. So the next question is by Kelly. Uh, Kelly, uh, what do I do about showing my work when the majority of my peers are showing digital? I feel like my portfolios are brushed aside because I don't have a lot of digital like others. Jesper Ising, you know, traditional painter. Traditional painter that works commercially. Huge importance on that, right? Because a lot of people, they don't feel like they can work as a professional, as a commercial illustrator, meaning for other people, doing jobs for other people if they are traditional. And that's Mm. just not true. There's Mm -hmm. always ways and there's always, um, if you get to a certain level, all of a sudden you get the jobs. Uh, But on the same token, it's, it's always very handy and helpful to um, embrace things that you think are going to help you that you would like. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you truly don't like digital paint, then that's cool. But if it's more because of um, fear of learning something new or just hesitation, just thinking about the work involved on learning something new, you can't back down. Mm-hmm. You got to keep going forward. You got to climb that mountain. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also impressive when you can do, and then once you learn the digital, you're you know it'll help the traditional. But when you can do both, it's like pretty impressive. Impressive as well. When you work in super hard, you don't get rid of pain. You don't get rid of frustration. You just learn to enjoy it. Yeah. And the key is learning to enjoy it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. It like it hurts, but it hurts so good. <laughs> like the pain yeah, of learning totally and every like... day i do this wim hof method you know exercises and stuff and it ends off in a ice cold shower you know i just <laughs> turn nothing but cold water on and it's freezing outside too and you can feel that cold coming into my home and everything so it makes these cold showers even worse almost, right? <laughs> yeah. you just gotta do it yeah yeah, you learn to love it. Yeah, and you know it's good for you, so it's like even more worth it. Totally, you gotta <laughs> dig deep. You know, we we all have unlimited artistic power, 
but effort is the key to unlocking it you know but being happy is kind of the key to putting in that good effort mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think you could get to the highest levels of any kind of profession unless you truly unless you learn to love it yeah yeah it's totally hard if you don't like yeah if you don't love it it's a bit challenging for you to kind of like immerse yourself into it yeah yeah like some people they do they get uh they get a little disgruntled and things like that over the years perhaps you know um but they still love it quite a bit and if it's the kind of people i'm thinking about it's like these people that did like 25 years of loving it before Mm -hmm. they were like meh (laughs) you know (laughs) so they already did their time and that's what got them to those high levels of art Mm -hmm. okay um so the next question is the last question is by ivana um how do you control soft and hard edges in photoshop mine looks always blurred i can control it traditionally but in computer it just never seems natural do you recommend any exercises um if you have 15 bucks you could take my digital painting class i go in depth into it but i will give you the freebie version where i just try to explain it okay so you can turn down your flow turn down your flow a whole bunch you know like 10 percent and try it again see if because that create that controls the rate at which your the paint comes out of your brush right so if it comes out a lot slower it's a lot easier to blend if that doesn't work turn down your opacity Uh, then try it again with low flow low opacity if that Mm -hmm. still doesn't work then choose a color that's closer to the color that you're painting on top of because the more contrasting the color is the more you're going to see that transition Mm -hmm. okay so uh, we're just going to move on to today's question. So the first one's by Pika Pete Animations. Um, how does one know they are studying the fundamentals correctly? Well, there's, there's also different ways to study the fundamentals. <clears throat> you know, so like um, I could look at, say, a tree. I'm drawing the tree and I'm thinking about it in a graphic sense. So I'm really trying to distill the essence of that tree in a graphic symbol perhaps or much more of a graphic illustration or I could be thinking about the very high level uh, three dimensionality of the tree as well as the the intricacies of the texture and really going for it like that Mm -hmm. you know so um, as long as you match the thinking that you're doing while drawing the stuff down with your ultimate goal then you're doing the fundamentals right so if you want to get better at structure you're really thinking about structure as you're drawing this thing if you're really thinking about I want to improve posing then I would want to pose the character in such a way where I'm really concentrating on the pose but really using the reference as exactly that just reference almost like inspiration for your own creation because if you're just copying the figure and matching those lines, matching those proportions, that means that you're not actually kind of drawing, uh, kind of creating something. You're more like copying something. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, so like these heads here, um, I was actually looking at other pictures and such, but then I would look away. Right, I just glance at the picture and look away and just try to figure it out. Just start painting it and just try to figure it out myself. So do they look like the people that I was actually looking at while I was painting these things? No, it doesn't um, because that wasn't my focus. My focus was trying to create uh, these faces more and more out of my imagination. That's the mm. idea. Cool. Okay. Uh, so the next question's by Henry. Will Will there be more drawing exercise videos? Never say never. You know. <laughs> um, perhaps. Right now, you know what? 
I'm just having fun just doing these my own little painting exercises but by all means like uh, take some screen captures of step by step and try to emulate it yourself mm -hmm. you know um, this is not like the only way to paint it's my way to, of painting but it's the secret to learning super quick and getting really good really quick is to learn from multiple people so by all means you can you know take screen grabs of these faces you know as I'm painting them and try to figure them out yourself mm -hmm. right try to go ahead of steps by mm -hmm. yourself just really thinking about it yeah and there's like a bunch of videos that we've been or you've been posting where you do like a like an exercise and stuff yeah yeah so those are good to like go back to yeah and if you're really hungry you know like I said um, a good lunch is about $15. If you're really hungry, same with the Schoolism subscription. <laughs> and then you got assignments galore with information galore. And these assignments to help you really instill that new knowledge, those mm. new skills into you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by KJP. Hey, Bobby, how did the Wim Hof method, the, the, the method improve your life? Oh, my goodness. Well, I haven't been sick since, and I used to get sick like every year, multiple times in a year. And there's been multiple times this year where I felt like I was getting sick, and then I would do the Wim Hof exercises and everything, and it's, you know, I could almost, I could almost feel that I haven't like had scientific testing or anything, but I feel like uh, I'm getting more and more control of my adrenaline mm. and that when you really start kind of controlling that and pumping that through your system when you feel sick you feel great after you don't feel sick anymore yes yeah, it's like amazing like I have nothing to gain from saying this to you guys except for the fact that um, hopefully some of you will take it try it Try it seriously, and it'll benefit your life, and then I'll have a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. That's all, that's all <laughs> I have to gain. Yeah. Okay, uh, so the next question is by Katie Jackson. Bobby, are you personally coming to London this year? I hope so. I hope so. Um, you know, it's like I'm just... I just got a lot of work right now mm -hmm. with, uh, with helping other instructors build their classes. You know, I really want to turn it up this year with Schoolism, so I, I'm helping nine different instructors right now build their incredible classes. You know, this is going to be like, uh, who is it going to be? It's going to be Paul Lazane. There's going to be, he's working on his class, Jesper Ising. Uh, Carl Kapinski is working on ima imaginative figure drawing, Jesper Ising, fantasy illustrations. Carla Ortiz is working on her class. Uh, character design for live action film. Super cool. Andrea Blasic, all my favorite artists, all these artists that I've mentioned over the years mm -hmm. and even today, some of them. Uh, Andrea Blasic, sculpture. Ian McKegg, I've been doing regular meetups with Ian about his course, which has taken a while, but many times that's that means it's going to be so worth it mm -hmm. Walter Tope like I was saying that's opening up on Monday expressive characters it's going to be very very cool Justin Gobi Fields I'm working on his class right now with him I'm checking it over and everything going through it uh, ZBrush for conceptual artists that is a really interesting one because one of the big um big directions that concept art is going is a hybrid between 3D and 2D. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay ahead of the curve, you know, I guarantee you 90% of the teachers out there, they don't know how to do this kind of stuff. Justin, that's exactly what he's teaching. And I'm super excited about that because that is going to give me a whole new arsenal of tools in my, you know, creature design or just you know, designing uh, arsenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and last but not least, literally a living legend and the most humble, the most coolest guy ever, Crash McQuarrie, 
designing monsters with Crash McQuarrie. He's worked on like Terminator 2. He's worked on uh, Predator 2. He's worked on um, he's worked on so many films. He he's the one that designed much of Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. One of my favorite characters in recent history. Mm. You know, Jurassic <clears throat> Park, this movie about dinosaurs. You yeah. know, he, he worked on that. He designed <laughs> many of the dinosaurs. Literally trying to get, like, the top, top artists out there to mm-hmm. share their knowledge. Um, fantastic. So, so awesome. yeah, London, I hope so. But uh, I'm having a really great time kind of right now just going through all these classes. And I think... Uh, it's like this battle you know i feel like the art community would benefit a lot more if i you know get these classes going mm-hmm. with these teachers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah 2017 is gonna be a good year oh it's gonna be epic hey <laughs> i'm not i don't want to live an average life per se <laughs> yep me neither <laughs> okay uh so the next question is by yen yen the, um Hey, Bobby, do you have any tips or exercise for someone who wants to get better at coloring? I'm having trouble getting nice looking color combinations. Uh, Easiest answer, you know, 15 bucks, get Dyson Roberts class, painting with light and color, Mm -hmm. fantastic. Or Sam Nielsen's class, Fundamentals of Lighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you're more, if you're yeah, if if you truly are interested in digital painting and learning light and color and all that stuff, I would say take a couple. There's also Nathan Falks, you know, um, designing with light and mm-hmm. color, uh, where he talks about the design mm-hmm. aspects of the whole entire thing, mm-hmm. which is fantastic as well. But the main thing I would say that kind of umbrellas most decision making is just focus on what we get. Um, Focus on what will get us great long-term results. You know, it might be a bit harder, but life will be easier in the long run. You know, mm-hmm. so always just focus on those long-term results. It's the, it's the slow plan mm-hmm. that is the mm-hmm. powerful one. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so the next question's by Moriaka. Uh, oh, sorry. Raymond Artist, any tips for coming up with my own project to practice live acting design skills? I guess keeping it focused and having limitations. Thanks. I guess keep keeping it focused and having limitations. Um, you know, that's a really those are really great points. It's always I always find it much easier when you have limitations. Mm. And of course, if you can keep focused on it, then you'll do great. I think you answered your own question. Right <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next question is by Moriaka. Uh, sometimes after rejection, I would ask for a feedback, but pretty much no success. I feel lost at the moment as I don't get directions to improve. I do try totally. to. Totally. S- I hear you. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, so with that, it's just like, okay, so if you were totally oblivious to how whatever you were being, you know, like uh, loud or awkward or, Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you were being, and you were totally being that, and I totally was like, no, you're not going to gel, and then you ask me, well, how did you do you know it's it, it's very tough for the employer to tell you for obvious reasons like you're coming to my shop wanting a job with me I'm assuming that hopefully in some way that you like us <laughs> and I don't want to offend anybody I don't want to tell anybody stuff you know what I mean that that I don't need to necessarily 
tell you because a lot of times people they don't want to hear it. Mm. They ask but they don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. They have a horrible reaction to it maybe. Mm-hmm. Not always, but sometimes and that's enough to make me to make employers in general, you know. Um they don't want to say anything. Yeah. I do try to really gauge and try to really see and I will um I'll try to say whatever kind of critique I got in a very uh, gentle way. Yeah. Just because, you know, sometimes when you're talking to somebody that you might really look up to, and I'm not saying, like, everybody looks up to me or anything, but, like, some people, they kind of do, you know? And if I say, oh, that was good, they feel it like, oh, my God gosh that was he said that was good or if i say oh you know that's a little lacking then they get crushed and they're oh (laughs) no you know everything's amplified by like a thousand times so listen carefully to the feedback that you get but i think one of the best things is if you do like a phone interview or something like that try to record it and listen to it again Mm. listen to yourself again Mm -hmm. and really listen to it with a fresh and open mind and hopefully ask somebody close to you you know what do you think I really don't know I haven't been getting any callbacks and you know stuff like that can you listen to this and give me some opinions Mm -hmm. okay um so the next question's by uh Alexi uh I've heard you talk quite a bit recently about the back and arm problems you've developed from drawing so much is it possible to get uh, to a high level while avoiding these injuries, though? Yeah. Um, exercise is a perfect way. Mm-hmm. Like, you rock climb. Yeah. Masay's a beast. You know, she, <laughs> she climbs rocks and stuff. So uh, that definitely helps a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I developed those arm and back problems because I would just... I would try to sit at my desk for as long as possible. You know, and constantly drawing in bad posture or like uh, bad uh, work setup. Mm. That's what really did is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so the next question is by T-Rod. You always talk about learning with logic. How do I go about doing that and how do I know I'm learning the best way? Loving the schools and by the way, fundamentals drawing Thomas Fulardi. Hey, right on. Nice. I would think about the future, you know, like, okay, logically, how do you kind of explain thinking logically? I think the best way is to really think about the the future and where it would lead you if you keep going down whatever path you're going down, or uh, if you take this decision and you, you know, you make this decision, where is it going to lead you? And so the way to think about that and to be more and more accurate with it is to delve into the tiny, tiniest little details of it. Mm. You know, so if you're posting something, perhaps, the best way is uh, post, like, screen capture. Maybe you're going to put up a new YouTube, you know, uh, video or a new tweet. Go to Twitter. Screen capture. Put it on Photoshop put your little icon there write your little blurb and as you scroll through all those different tweets think about how you feel about it Mm. right Mm -hmm. that's what i'm talking about getting into tiniest tiny little details try to get into the head of the person that you want to affect in whatever way and see if you are affecting uh in that way Mm. Mm mm-hmm Okay, awesome. Um, so the next question is by Holly Rose. Hi, Bobby and Masay. I'm currently working on building up my skills, focusing on values and still life studies, but don't have a portfolio, just a couple of fant- fantasy illustrations. I'd like to sign up for the Florence workshop, but would it be worth being, one, without a portfolio, and two, not being at a pro level? I think I might be intermediate level right now. Holly, you know, you. it's like... Think about the future, right? Like, if you go to a place where there's all these amazing professionals uh, giving in-depth 
you know, lessons and instruction and workshops, will you get to that professional level faster? Yes. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you know, most and just about every person that goes to these workshops, you will get more information than you can handle. Yeah. Right? Oh, You've yeah. been to a whole bunch. Oh, yeah. I've been to a whole bunch. <laughs> There's, it's, it's information overload. So uh, no matter what skill level you're at, the fastest way to improve is to do things like this, like go and meet the people that got immense knowledge about whatever it is you want to learn and learn from them directly. Mm -hmm. That's the best way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so the next question's by Moriaka. Uh, I'm in my 30s. Is it too late for me? No one would look seriously serious if you are applying for junior roles slash internship at that age. Any tips? Life has a way of kind of, um, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like we're all set up, you know, in a way where it's like, you get older, it gets harder, right? Why does it get harder? Perhaps because you have these responsibilities you didn't have before, so it's harder to change gears, change directions. Uh, perhaps it's because people will look at you like, oh, you're older or whatever. But um, the great thing about art is there's no prime with mm -hmm. art. You know, I'm sure you were doing other things with your life, you know, uh, until you start taking art seriously. It's fine. It's totally fine. You know, and th the other thing is, is that whatever you were doing with your life before art, you learned some stuff. You experienced some stuff. And many of those things can come back into your art. You know, I was doing this uh, interview with uh, the Black Frog, Igor... Igor Albin Chevalier. I've been really <laughs> practicing that one. It's still With probably brutal pronunciation. <laughs> you know, his dad was an uh, antique dealer. And he was talking about um, the difference between a three piece suit now and a three piece suit from the 1940s. And he's like, oh, those are beautiful. That's how you make clothes, the stitching. If you know what you're looking for, you'll see why it's so much better. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Does that, um, that kind of info, does that kind of knowledge affect your art? He's mm -hmm. like, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, because then I could put all the details. And if you don't know what you're looking for in a 1920s alarm clock, uh, me as a person that knows will know that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Right? So whatever it is that you were doing before you're 30 and all that, uh, that's all really great stuff that many times will come back into your life and give you that advantage over all these other people that might be younger than you. Mm -hmm. You know, the main thing is now you're 30, have a distinct, have a more and more clear goal. You know, try to get it as precise as possible. Because fuzzy goals bring fuzzy results, but very clear goals will bring you laser pinpoint accuracy results, you know, much, much uh, easier. Mm. Okay, so the next question is uh, by Ieda Art. Uh, Ied Art. Uh, Hi, Bobby, I just quit my job and signed up for schoolism for a better art career. My wife is supportive but doubtful. What would I? What would you say to her? Granted, I'll work my butt off and practice twenty four seven. I just say to you know your wife, baby. <laughs> just give me a little bit of uh, just a a little bit of trust, and I I promise you I'll earn the rest. Boom. Boom. Okay. And I, say, <laughs> I love you, babe. <laughs> We're do. I'm doing this for us. Uh -huh. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> Generally, you know, I'll prove it through actions, not words. Just give me a little time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is by Brad. Um, at 40 years old, I'm having a midlife creative crisis and believe I want to start doing character design. Any tips for an older beginner with a career, a mortgage, a wife, and a dog? You know, whatever you're doing now for a living, don't just drop it if you haven't started character design at all. 
be ready for the tough road ahead. Mm-hmm. It's fine. It's fine that it's tough. It's not going to kill us. Like I said, we're not lizards or flies and things like that. We have worries, but they're not as like hardcore. Mm-hmm. You know, so just get amped, get psyched up, know that there's going to be tons of frustration coming and that there's going to be many frustrations that will come that are not directly related to drawing and painting. This is something I believe, you know, it could be your car breaks down or something. Hopefully it doesn't, you Mm -hmm. know, Uh, but generally these things always happen to me whenever I'm trying to do something big with my life. I always go through all these obstacles that I feel like I didn't deserve or were not related to the thing that I'm trying to achieve. They will come anyways, I feel. And that is just life's test. Believe it. Believe it. You know, and the, the way to pass life's test and get those goods or whatever it is you're looking for is to put a big smile on your face. Keep going. Mm-hmm. Okay. Faith is what's going to bring that motivation and persistence that you need. Mm -hmm. Start with believing it's possible. That's how you're going to do things. And discipline yourself. You know, like think about it. Okay, you're 35 right now. You, or was it 40? I don't even know. 40, okay. You want to be an amazing character design professional by the time you're what age? Think about this. 43 like top level character design professional 43 well when do you get up how much drawing do you do all that stuff how much do you learn how many classes do you take a year how many instructional books do you go through or whatever think about it and then think about what it is that you really can do and think about whether or not you want to pay that price and if the answer is yes then go for it. You know, this is a conversation I had with a friend of mine a long time ago when he was talking about um, changing professions and doing the fine art thing. I said, well, you haven't started fine art yet. So think about it like this. In 10 years from now, how much do you want your paintings to be selling for? $15,000? Okay, well, 10 years from now, how many shows, how many solo shows did you do? maybe five, maybe seven, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're getting really prolific, Uh, maybe uh, 20 different little group shows where you you submit one painting, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, how many, how much are you charging for a little painting in your first show? It's not going to be much. You want to start collecting those collectors, you know, uh, so yeah it probably might might not be much Mm -hmm. well then a year from now how much would you want to be selling a painting for regularly hopefully i don't know maybe like four or five hundred dollars in three years you want to be doing like fifteen hundred dollars to two thousand dollars and then you know uh five years from now hopefully two to three thousand dollars and then seven years from now eight to nine thousand dollars and ten years from now $15,000. $15,000. Perhaps, you know, like build that out in your head. Think about logically, you know, what sounds the most realistic to you, mm-hmm. like the more the most probable to you and all the steps that you need to do to achieve those steps, to achieve those goals, mm-hmm. right? And then ask yourself if you're willing to pay the price. Mm-hmm. And then picture a bunch of rocks falling on your head as you're trying to paint because that's what will happen figuratively (laughs) stuff will come in the way it's not a smooth road so be ready for those so when you see them when you see those speed bumps then you're ready and you know what to do and you're gonna Mm. go over them and you're gonna keep going yeah it's really awesome advice thanks (laughs) we're going through a lot of this kind of stuff you know because we don't want an average life machine (laughs) trying to do things with our lives kick some butt okay um how about one last question this is the last question for this week okay sure thing um hmm. okay maybe i'll just do the next question maybe we can go through a couple uh really quickly 
Christina asks, the new course stands, uh, sounds fantastic. Is it going to be a critiqued one only, or will it be available self-taught subscribers? So new classes, what happens is a lot of people, they find the feedback videos very, very helpful. You know, they watch the lessons, they do the assignments, and as subscribers, they want to see those feedback videos. Mm. So first we run a, a class with uh, no subscriptions. It's just the premium... Uh, critiqued sessions right and then uh, the teacher will do all these feedback videos and then once he goes through the full course then we'll put Wouter's class in the subscription program for mm -hmm. everybody to see because then there'll be uh, response videos mm -hmm. okay the next question is by Movco would you be able to get James Jones on board the elusive Jamie Jones. Jamie Jones. Um, I, I'm not sure. You know, you never say never. I don't know the person uh, personally. Love his work, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so maybe we'll make this the last question. Um, by Nacho. Hey, guys, it's great to be back. How does the creative block affect your professional career? I mean, like artists, we all have ups and downs, but when your life doesn't depend on your art, you can just go for a walk or do other things. But as a professional, how do you face that when all your income comes from your art? Go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, come back with fresh eyes or ask somebody else for their opinion or do a, a different project or leaf through a few art books, you know, set a timer, 30 minutes. I'm just gonna leaf through a bunch of art books and get some inspiration, mm -hmm. you know, and I only have 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff uh, tends to work very well for me. Yeah. And of course, all these things I'm saying, um, they are really, they're just like, they're our own opinions. Um, and there's many different ways to skin a cat. So, you know, don't be afraid to try your own ways. And of course, if any of what we're saying makes sense to you, then you got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, don't let fear, don't let fear of hard work or whatever stop you because that's the test that's that's what separates the high level professional from the artists that will struggle all their lives mm -hmm. all right everybody i think that's it for today i had a really great time with say yeah, thank you so nice. much always nice to end the week with a cheese stream yeah and then lunch <laughs> it's great great yeah. combo so <laughs> Next week, same time, same channel, Chew Stream, be there. All right, everybody. Have a great, wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Want more to listen to while you draw and paint? Remember to visit schoolism.com. You'll find art courses, live workshops, and over 100 free video interviews with many of the top artists in the art industry. Where do professionals go to keep learning? Schoolism.com.